With that all said, uh, allow me to introduce our next shiny talk by Dror Burrell. Applause, yeah. Woo. Thank you. I'm going to talk about high level module based R shiny apps with Teal framework application beyond the pharma domain. My name is Dror and I'm an independent statistical consultant. These are some of the places I was studied, worked, teaching, including the Fred Hatch Cancer Center here in Seattle, University of Washington, and then some tech, counting clicks, and more recently, pharma at all sizes. My background, I was trained as a statistician. Therefore, hypothesis, experimental design, and experimental unit till today are terms that are close to my heart. And we'll go back to those later. I began my career with SAS, then at some point with S+, and R. I consider myself an early adopter of R web applications, so I was playing with technologies such as Hatches, Brew, Rook, WebSockets, even before Shiny was a thing. And I used R for many other things, genomics, biomarker discovery, clicks, IOs, under different titles, data science, real-world evidence, epidemiology. But at the end of the day, what I'm doing is descriptive, visualization, inference, machine learning, and causal inference, mostly thanks to R that brought me to these type of interesting opportunities. So today I'm gonna to talk about common challenges with shiny web apps, specifically about the scope or architecture. And I'm gonna tell you why I love the Teal framework. A spoiler alert, well, because it solved those common challenges. And I will have an example, a demo, with, with non-clinical data. A disclaimer. I am just one happy user. I'm not one at the contribute, I'm not a developer of this Teal framework. And therefore, I'm gonna present my own opinion and review. So my day starts with that, right? People dump their data sets and visualization and request on me and ask me, could you please make sense out of that? Share some insight with us and hopefully that insight will actually have an impact. And it's not only that. So here are also kind of like all kind of stuff I see with shiny apps, architecture scope. I see many times unnecessarily data ranging. For example, I see all kind of like joints which are subject level, subject level data sets with non-subject level data sets, which causing some redundancy, right? If we accidentally do a full join or inner joins, we might accidentally remove observations that are crucial to the data, which I'm gonna say is violating the experimental unit. I see unnecessary pre-calculated repeated metrics, KPIs for all possible combination covariates groups other than instead of using a parameterized function. So hopefully, this could be avoided by using functions, modules, and parameterized uh, functions, even with the trick of non-standardized evaluation, NSE. I see all kinds of weird convoluted functions that are not focused, not isolated. And what I call, I see scope creeps, meaning too many ad hoc patches to handle some edge scenarios. So if your code have too many of those patches and you think, no, that's not elegant, and I forgot what it even does, that means you're about to breach the scope of your tool. So how do I tackle it? I go back to the basics, hypothesis, experimental design, and experiment unit, which you might also be familiar as the tidy format. And it's very simple principles or structure designs as columns for the variables, observations at the rows, and values at the intersection of each of those columns and rows. So what is an experimental unit? Before I define it, let's look at some example. A clinical trial. Let's say we have the hypothesis of treatment A is better than treatment B to reduce a blood pressure. What's the experimental unit? It's patients. And we compare blood pressure among patients in group A and group B. Biomarker discovery. The hypothesis is subject with high expressed gene Z are more likely to exhibit some phenotype. What's the experimental unit? A subject I. Meta-analysis. The hypothesis, the association between gene X and clinical y, outcome Y is the same across multiple studies. What's the experimental unit? A whole study, okay? So we'll be back to these examples. And here's the definition. Experimental unit is a physical entity that is the primary unit of interest in a specific research objective, 
an item that received the treatment intervention, the entity you want to make inference about in a population based on the sample in your experiment. So in my previous talks in, in this conference, I was mentioning object-oriented classes by the back conductor community expression set, which preserved the experimental unit, meaning with no joints, you were able to put together different data sets in order to do some repetitive task that people who analyze genomic data are using. So the object design is actually enforcing and help you to not to do those joints, which are uh, violating the experimental unit. Meta-analysis, that's another good point. One of the Cascadia conference I presented, the experimental unit here is a whole study, which mean, meaning an object-oriented class that have a multi-omic container. From that, we extract only one layer, let's say a microarray, gene expression, and from that we extract just the result that we want. But the idea is that we put the experimental unit in the rows, and then we do systematically row-wise operation that are not violating the experimental unit. But today's talk is about shiny modules. So let's see how this is related. What is a shiny module? Last year, today's uh, keynote speaker, Deepsha, gave a great presentation about shiny modules and also the presentation before. And she says functions and, and shiny are, she said, when shiny and functions have babies, right? I, I love that. So here are my babies drinking cup from a random cup I have at home. Uh, so briefly going, what is a model? It's a pair of UI and server functions. So here on the left, we have the traditional uh, way of writing a shiny app. And on the right side, we have the module. So it's a function wrapping that also with the parameter of ID. And at the bottom, we have that equivalence for the server side. And we here are the, the green parts kind of like they look the same, but they're wrapped under a different framework that allow us to use it uh, as a function. So I came home excited and I thought, okay, so R is a functional programming language. That's great. We don't write functions from scratch each time, right? We use the package system. We all use functions, some ours and some not. Same applies with modules. Modules are functions for Shiny. I can write my own modules for my own needs. Right? But honestly, I, I'm, I'm just too lazy. <clears throat> I, I mean, busy to do that. So where can I find modules, functions that others wrote for similar needs? Luckily, I found at least 273 people from the Pharmaverse community that were thinking about the same thing and actually shared those modules in a specific set of packages. Those packages are under the framework called TEAL and excuse me again for a very simplified description, I would say the TIL is a collection of shiny modules plus framework around it to assemble them in a coherent way. So again, each model is a pair of UI and server functions and which handle the communication between the UI and the server, between the input and the output. And here's a quick glimpse with just a few lines of code that I'll present you next. You could run and, and have this dashboard that have those multiple tabs and it does most of the use cases for data exploratory, including filtering and uh, data summary and visualization graphs, you name it. Most likely it's already there. So these are the specific modules that they have. Uh, on the left side are the basic ones with five year uh, missing data, outliers, variable browser and cross tables. On the right side are some more statistical contexts with association, bivariate, distribution, response, scatter plots, PCA, and regression. These are all custom made, being carefully written by experts, each in their domain, for us to use. And here's how it looks. In just these two li these lines of code, I will demonstrate next that you could have this dashboard. So I load the TIL and the other uh, dependencies packages. I use the function init, I dump in my data set, which I'll go next, and I list the modules that I want to be used. Those are the tabs we've just seen. So these modules doesn't even need to have a specific parameter other than a name. So by default, it will take all of the data sets that are in the data T object, which again, I will be next. 
So as you may note, I don't need to use the input and the output dollar signs. I don't need to worry about reactive, observed events. These are all built in, in a seamless integration under the TIL framework. Only problem is that this TIL is designed for clinical data sets, right? Because this was an effort by uh, pharma, people who analyze clinical trials. So they care more about CDISC, ADAMS. These are formats of data sets that many of us are not familiar with. Is that going to deter us from using it? Absolutely not. So I try to play with my own data sets and see if I could still leverage this amazing framework with any type of data set. So I went to the survivor data sets. Someone bothered to watch all of the TV shows and annotate the data sets into a package uh, with anything you want and, and couldn't even think about that relate to that TV show. So that's gonna be the first data set. I'm gonna, it's called castaways, but I'm gonna call it subject level. And the idea is that this is going to be my core table or skeleton, some people call it, and it will have one row for each of the experimental units. And here the experimental unit is the castaway, the participant, Bruce, Maddie, Heidi. And I will not violate it. I will not have multiple rows for this subject, at least not in this data set. However, what if I do have events, multiple events for each of those participants, then I have another data set called challenge results. And this is what I'm gonna call event level. And here, the experimental unit is combinations of more than one columns, meaning each of the participants could have multiple rows. So suppose they participate in two challenges, and so I have the multiple rows for that. So the dilemma traditionally is, if this is the uh, schema on how to, one could link between the two data sets, so should I do join, merge, or not? I argue we shouldn't. We should use other tools that may be doing the, the, the merge and joins for us without us having to do it manually um, so we do not violate the experimental unit. So let's see how it's done. So remember this uh, t data T object? Here we're gonna define it. We're gonna first say what are the name of the data sets. And then with the join keys function, we're going to define the relationships between the columns in those data sets. So the join key parameter have the name of the first data set, the second data set, and the column to be used for the join. So this obviously look familiar from a traditional join function, but it's not an actual join. It's only mapping those joins to be used by the framework. And that's the, one of the biggest advantages. So once I'm doing that, only with the two data sets I have, the DF subject level and uh, DF events, uh, just a minute before I demo it, I, I'll give you some warnings. So the TIL layout is not uh, as what we, most users who use Shiny are familiar with a menu bar on the left side and visualization. It also doesn't have like a sidebar. However, it has this type of structure. There is some menu bar on, on the left side. There is additional uh, filtering bars on the right side. And in the center, we have the output. So finally, let's go to the demo. So while the app was uploading, thank you for the intermission. Uh, so here is the data table and we have like a data summary for the two sub data sets, the DF subject level and the DF events. Um, and here is a variable browser. I didn't need to name them by default, by the scope of this tool, they were already populated and I could play with them and visualize them and select and do whatever I want. So the coolest part to me, which relate to experimental units, here on the right side, I am able to filter the data sets. So I could do it for each of the data sets that I have, and I have two data sets, the subject level one and the DF event one. The magic is, is when I populate the, the one that I defined as the core one, I have this key uh, icon, which tell me that castaway is the one that was designed to be the primary key, okay? So that means that whatever I'm gonna use with this variable, it's going to affect not only this table, but all of the other data, all of the other tables that are linked to this core table. So let's say we want analysis only for um, 
participants from a specific city. So I, I linked on city and then it's populate here. And I have here a list of all the cities. I could select and deselect my subjects. And magically, it trim and, and filter the analysis, again, not only for the subject level, but for all of the other data sets. Okay, now I have only 17 edge entries. Here on the top right, I also have summary of these uh, rows, which are the observations and the actual unique subject IDs, which are the subjects. Switching back to the presentation, I was also able to modify it. So a swimmer lane plot, by default, it came with the geom point. I wanted to try something with GGI graph that gives some more interactive ways. So by just ch changing one line of code, I was able to write my own module and plug it in. The developers have a, a great YouTube video that have more detailed explanation of that. The pros is convenient, no joins, wide enough scope, doesn't need to work all the nitty gritty details, reactivity, non-reactivity, support multi-omic bioconductor, which are my favorite objects. However, the cons are, it may have a prefix layout and not much flexible to customize with CSS design and your own HTML. So the trade-off, do you know enough how to modify it for your own needs? I make the analogy with electric vehicle that can pre-assemble and drive, or do you wanna still want to build it from scratch? Take home message, avoid unnecessary joints, preserve the experimental unit. Shiny teal models are great, give it a try. Community is priceless, specifically the examples of Bioconductor and Palmerverse. Scope matters, that's what I mean. A well-designed tool will last longer. Analysis workflows make sense when everything is in its right place, right? We have slots for, for these things, no matter how condensed they are. Therefore, choose a tool with a wide scope that best fits your needs. And if you need help with that, feel free to reach out. Thanks. <laughs>